Good day everyone. So welcome po sa ating first ever online video lesson in UCSP. So um, today, ang pag-uusapan po natin is about the early civilization and the rise of the state. So I have already given you the module about this lesson, pero I have decided to still uh, make a video for you to have a clearer and better understanding about this topic. Importante kasi na maintindihan natin yung early civilization na to at the rise of state and the type of governments na meron ang mga tao before because if you do not know how these things work you will never be able to understand the future lessons so i know it will take too much of your time but i am encouraging you to be patient okay and to watch this video so before we start our proper lesson so mag we will be having first the recap of the first module. So, last time, pinag-uusapan o natutunan mo, kung binasa mo yung module, okay, natutunan mo yung macro-evolution na tinatawag natin. So, in the macro-evolution, nagkaroon tayo ng tatlong um, or three archaeological periods. So, we have the Stone Age, the Bronze Age, and the Iron Age. So, this Stone Age, if as what you could see here na nahati still ang Stone Age sa pa, sa tatlong periods. We have the Paleolithic, the Mesolithic, and then the Neolithic. So, Paleolithic people, ayan, so the Paleolithic people, they are known as hunters and gatherers. So, they are not doing nothing. Okay? Wala po silang ibang inatupag, ibang ginawa, but only to hunt and gather animals, fish, Okay, for them to survive. Ayan po. So, after ng Paleolithic period, saan nag-end ang Paleolithic? Nag-end po ito after the Ice Age. Okay, tatandaan natin that the Paleolithic period ends after. Okay. After the, sorry for my handwriting. Alam ko naman na walang pinagbago. <laughs> Paras pa din naman. Ayan, so it ends after the Ice Age. So, after ng Ice Age, nag-arise po ang mga panibagong set of people who are known as the Mesolithic. So, ang Mesolithic people po, hindi na lang po sila basta nag-hunt at nag-gather ng mga food for them to survive, but they learned the wonder of agriculture. Natutunan po nilang um, they were able to, to know and learn how to plant wheat and other crops. Actually, Paano na drive the question is ang question kasi dito from being hunter and gatherer. Ano ang nangyari? How come these Mesolithic people are driven to plant crops? Saan sila kumuha ng buto? Okay? Saan sila kumuha ng source ng learning, okay? On how they were able to plant the crops and the wheat. So it started when there is this uh kumaga, nagsimula po ito nung merong mga Tawag dito, parang it was found out by the archaeologists na natatagpuan kasi ng mga Mesolithic people ang ang isang lupain na punong-puno ng wheat. Okay, yung tinatawag natin wheat or palay na tinatawag natin. Okay, palay nga ba sa wheat or yung tinatawag natin rice grain. So ngayon, yung rice grain po o yung wheat, wala po silang natagpuan na buto neto. Okay, it was just umusbong lang po bigla, okay, yung mga pananim na wheat at yung rice grain na to. At inalam po ng mga Mesolithic people kung paano siya nabubuhay, kung paano siya gumagana, paano siya nag-grow. So by that, na-introduce po ang agriculture because of their discovery of the wheat that is planted na nagpapabusog sa kanila. Okay, so inaral nila, pinag-aralan nila, kung maisip natin, no, na... Mali yung stereotype natin eh, that Stone Age people are really illiterate. Kung maiisip natin, we will never know how to plant wheat and rice grain without the, 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 the prior learning of the Mesolithic people na ginawa nila on planting those kind of crops. Okay? So after the Mesolithic people, nag-arise po ang mga Neolithic wherein they were able to enhance the learning or enhance the activity of agriculture and we're able to make food 
production. Ayan. So, that is about the Stone Age. So, how about naman, ayan, so I almost forgot to tell you that during the Stone Age, ito po, according to archaeologists, sa mga fossils na natagpuan nila, these are um, the physical features of the Stone Age people. during that times. So, tawag po silang Neanderthals and the Denisovans. So, this group of people, ang kauna-unahan pong nag according to the archaeologists, recorded ito, na sila daw ang kauna-unahan klase ng mga tao na nag on Earth. Ayan. So, after the, the Stone Age, okay, nag-arise naman po ang Bronze Age. So, dito po nila natutunan Okay, nag-arise po, okay, ang Bronze Age through using bronze. Ayan, itong klase ng metal na to in making tools. So, doon sa Stone Age na to, ang ginagamit pala nilang pang hunt at pag gather ng mga hayop at animals are still tools. Mga kutsilyo at mga sibat din ito, pero they are mostly made up of stones. But here in the Bronze Age, they are using Uh, bronze in making sharper and more effective tools and knives. So aside from these weapons and tools, now they were able to to discover or invent actually the potter's wheel. Ayan. So dito na basically nag-start um, yung paggawa ng mga ceramics, paggawa ng mga plato, ayan, ng mga baso, ng mga mangkok, okay? Dito na rin nag-start yung mga cutlery na ginagamit sa mga pagkain. And, dito din po nag-arise in the Bronze Age yung paggamit ng tela. Paggamit ng tela sa pananamit. Okay? So, according to the historian, no, not historians, but archaeologists, ito yung kanilang natagpuan na oldest picture or oldest ano na lang to i believe is an replica na lang ito hindi ito talaga yung original na itsura ng damit ng mga people during the bronze age so ito lang po ang replica or ganito po ang halos itsura ng mga damit nila noon ayan so nagumusbong ang um, weapons made up of you or tools made up of um bronze mali yung sulat ko dito it must be bronze ayan so na introduce din po ang ang um, tawag dito paggawa po ng mga ng pottery clothes and then of course ang pinaka importante sa lahat during the bronze age nag-start po ang pag-arise ng government okay so after that we have the iron age so dito na umusbong ang iba't ibang klase ng mga weapons and tools made up of metals Ayan, kung makikita natin, ayan, those are the different kinds of knives and tools in kitchen, in in hunting, gathering, food made up of iron or any other of metals, other kind of metals. So, dito na din po na-improve ang kanilang mga bahay. So, kung makikita ninyo dito sa picture na ang kanilang bahay, nagsimula na po itong maging gawa sa bato. Okay, so before kasi made up of ano lang to, parang bahay kubo made up of um, strong kind of plants. So, aside from the tools and the innovated houses of the people in the Iron Age, so dito na din po nag-arise yung iba't ibang klase ng mga religion. Yan. So, it is during the Iron Age. So, I hope na intindihan nyo to. Okay? So, ulitin ko, we have the three archaeological periods, Stone Age, Bronze Age, and then the Iron Age. So, we will be moving on to our proper lesson, which is about the early civilization and the rise of state. Knowing, kung makikita natin in those three archaeological periods, sobrang makaluma. Okay? So, wala pang masyadong innovation. They are more of about discovering the first-hand use ng mga material sa nasa paligid nila. But here in early civilization, dito na nagkaroon ng enhancement. Dito na nagkaroon ng development on how this first-hand discoveries, okay, must be used in other forms. Ayan. So, ano nga ba pag sinabi nating civilization? So, ang civilization po, it actually came from the two Latin words, which are civis and civets. So, civis meaning people in a city, and then civets meaning an urban community. So, basically, civilization is actually a state of societal development. 
sulat ko na lang dito. Di ko, sorry han, may, nakalimutan ko siyang isulat, i-type dito. It is a state of societal development. A state of societal development wherein people, okay, in a certain community, experience advanced advanced government, advanced um, technology, advanced <clears throat> agriculture, and everything. So, ang pinakamagandang example ng civilization is turning a town into a city. So, um, we could consider that a certain community ay pwede siyang gawing city kapag ano, kapag damit niya yung certain, um, certain number of population na nag doon sa lugar na yon. And aside from that, kung advanced, okay, yung lahat ng mga bagay in that community. Like for example, in towns or in provinces hindi lang i'm not only talking about here ah, about technology so meron tayong iba't iba pang mga klasing aspeto okay or or factors when we could say that a certain community is advanced like for example in towns and provinces ano lang ba ang usual na trabaho na meron sila fishing agriculture um things like that Okay, or mga cooperative businesses, cooking, baking, uh, at kung ano-ano pa. But if you go to a city, we, there is really a great difference wherein doon nagkakaroon ng mga auditing firms na wala sa towns and provinces. May mga doon nakatayo ang mga engineering or construction companies na hindi natin usually nakikita sa towns and provinces. Big universities, malls. Um, tawag ito, uh, recreational parks, okay, na hindi masyado at hindi uso when it comes to different or some towns and provinces. So, we could say, kung ang isang community ay merong mga ganong klaseng bagay, we could consider them as already civilized. Okay? Maliwanag po yun. So, alam ko, kahit hindi ka sumasagot, tumatango-tangong ka, okay? So, Meron akong i-discuss sa inyo na limang countries, ayan, actually anim pala sila, anim na bansa or what we call the six world's first cities. So ano-ano ang anim na bansang naging, naging first city in the world? First, we have Mesopotamia. So ang Mesopotamia, ngayon po ang Mesopotamia ay known as Iraq. Okay. Iba na po ang pangalan ng Mesopotamia. It is now Iraq. So, ang Mesopotamia po, ang Mesopotamia galing po siya sa two Greek words na Mesos and Potamus. So, nakalagay naman ito sa inyong module. So, you better check it na lang. So, when we say Mesos, it means middle. And when we say Potamus, it means river. So, kung makikita natin yung geographical location ni Mesopotamia, siya po ay nasa gitna ng dalawang river known as the Tigris and the Euphrates River. Okay po. So, aside from Mesopotamia as the first world city, okay, we have here the Egypt's Nile Valley. Ayan. So, ito po ay syempre matatagpuan sa Egypt. And then, we have the Indus Valley. Ang Indus Valley po ngayon, it is known as Pakistan. Okay. And Indus Valley and China. Ayan. So, kung mapapansin ninyo han, Mesopotamia, Egypt's Nile Valley, the Indus Valley, and China. What do you think is the most common factor in those four cities? Okay. The most common factor or the common denominator that these four cities have is what? They are located in the body, in a body of water. Kung mapapansin nyo, no? Mesopotamia, nasa gitna siya ng dalawang river. Ang Egypt, ang Egypt's Nile Valley, kaya nga siya valley kasi siya po ay nasa Nile or nasa tabi po ng Nile na river. So, ang Indus Valley, nasa Indus River po siya. And then, we have the Yellow River in China. Ganito kasi yan. So, sila po ang apat na kauna-unahang nag-civilize na bansa because water is really a great factor during the earliest time for you to become a prosperous community. Mahalagang mahalaga po ang tubig sa papaanong paraan. First, okay, kapag malapit ka sa tubig, you could fish. 
you have the access in different water resources. And aside from that, lalo na sa Mesopotamia, kapag nagkakaroon po ng high tide sa Mesopotamia, um, nag-excess, umi-excess po yung water ng Tigris and Euphrates, which uh, had this tremendous effect on the on the soil of Mesopotamia, wherein nagiging good fertile land po siya para mapagtaniman ng mga crops. Do you get the idea? So, napaka laking factor po kapag ang isang ang isang island ay nasa pagitan or nasa tabi ng bodies of water because farming and fishing is one of the um, first industry okay na meron sa buong na meron sa mundo during that time kaya po sila ang naging kauna-unahang mga sikat or mayayamang mga bansa because of the gift that they have kasi maganda ang kanilang geographical location Okay, so next, we have Peru. Tama ba? We have Peru. So, sa Peru po, dito matatagpuan, alam ko, alam nyo Machu Picchu. Ayan. So, ang Peru, ang kanyang asset naman is yung kanyang magandang geographical location in farming. So, maganda kahit na, kahit na wala tubig sa paligid na mag-high tide na matatamnan ng matabang lupa. yung farmland mo, hindi na kailangan nun because maganda po kasi ang lupa sa Peru. So, mayaman sila when it comes to agricultural crops and products. Kaya po sila naging mayamang bansa or mayamang city before. Civilized city per se. Okay? So, aside from Peru, we have the Meso America. So, ang Meso America naman, it is in the middle of America. Kaya nga siya, meso. ba diba? Pag sinabing meso, Greek word meaning mesos, ibig sabihin ay middle. So, ngayon, ang meso America, nakalocate siya ngayon from New Mexico to the Central America. So, yun yung sakip, sakop niya during the earliest period of time. So, ang naging asset din neto ni meso America is the farming. So, magandang lupa po. Okay, ang meso America before in farming. Okay, so the question now is, how do these cities arise? Okay, ano-ano kaya ang mga naging factor for the Mesopotamia, the the Egypt, the Indus, or the Pakistan today, the, uh, the Peru, and the Mesoamerica become become a civilized city? So, meron tayong iba't ibang factors for us to consider Not to consider, but different factors that will help a community to become civilized. So, the first one is the agricultural innovation. So, kung mapapansin ninyo, kung hindi po na-discover okay, ng mga Mesolithic people kung paano magtanim ng wheat at ng iba't ibang mga crops, baka hanggang ngayon nag-hunt at nag pa rin tayo. Okay? Nagahant at nagagather pa rin tayo. Mahirap po 'yon if people continue uh, continuously become hunter and gatherer kasi darating po ang punto na mauubos po lahat ng mga resources. Kaya we need to use or we need to make ways okay for us to enhance the environment and enhance what we have today. para ma-improve natin siya, ma-enhance natin siya at mapadami natin siya. So one of the key Okay, of those civilized city is the agricultural innovation. They were able to change farming methods. Like for example, the irrigation system. Okay, in Mesopotamia, um, na, ang Mesopotamia po ang kauna-unahang nakaimbento okay, ng irrigation system. Anong meron sa irrigation system? So, kung makikita ninyo in this picture, this is not actually the, the actual land of Mesopotamia, pero ganito po ang nangyayari sa irrigation system. We have here the certain body of water. So, ang ginagawa po ng mga workers is they are making um, canals, mga kanal, okay, ang social na canals, <laughs> mga kanal po, okay, mga hole uh, o mga tubo, okay, that will make this body of water flow, okay, here, para magkaroon po ng matabang lupa dito. Okay, so that is a very nice idea. Okay, so mga mga tao po, mga tao in the Mesopotamia po, ang unang naka-invento na niya. And that is one of the reasons why became civilized because of their idea of irrigation system. 
So, ayan. So, we, sabi ko nga kanina, we can never be forever hunter and gatherer. So, pag sinabi kasi nating hunter and gatherer, tinatawag po natin silang mga nomads. Ang nangyayari, ang nangyayari po kasi in the agricultural is innovation is nomads people became permanent settlers. Okay. So ang mga nomads kasi ano yan, uh, wala po si wala pong permanente sa kanila. Palipat-lipat, paiba-iba po yan sila ng Jawa. Ay, sorry, sorry pa, hindi po ganan. Okay, paiba-iba po sila ng ng land na tinitirhan nila kasi hunter and gatherer sila eh. Okay, hindi na mas sila nagtatanim, hindi na mas sila nag-enhance. Pupunta lang sila sa isang lugar na merong matabang lupa, na merong puno. Kapag nauhos na yung puno na pinagkukunan nila ng pagkain, they will move to another land. So, good thing okay, about the intelligence of humankind is we were able to discover the, the, discover on how to enhance agriculture. Okay? So, aside from that, we have the diversification of labor. Labor, sorry. Diversification of labor. So at this point, okay, nagkaroon um tawag dito, naging civilized po ang mga towns and communities because people were able to find their roles. Roles ganap sa buhay, okay? Ang nangyayari po kasi siyaan during the earliest time, bawal po ang tamad, bawal po ang tambay. Lahat po ng mga tao in a certain household must be a part of a certain role. Okay, hindi ka po dapat nasa bahay lang except kung babae ka. Pero if you are a male, you are expected to take part uh, to take part, okay, in the community. Dapat kapag lalaki ka, possible copper smith ka, sorry. You you could be a silver smith, sculptor, merchant, potter, tanners, engravers, butchers, carpenters and so on. Okay? So Isa po yan sa nagiging factor, why do towns become civilized? People work. People take part of their own roles. Malinaw po ba? Kaya never po talaga na magiging civilized ang isang community kung tamad po ang mga tao. Okay? Kaya kung mapapansin niyo in towns and provinces, since um ang kanilang main source of income is farming and fishing, paano kapag wala kang skills in farming and fishing? What are you going to do? Stay ka lang sa bahay. Okay? Or what else you could do? You could become a farmer pero hindi ka magiging effective because that is not your skill. But if we could see, diba, in the civilized cities, in Makati, in Taguig, there are a lot of jobs, okay, that you could take part depending on your interests, which makes them a civilized community because there is a diversity of roles that are being taken part of different people in the community. Okay? So, next, ayan. So, ayan po. Okay? So, kapag lalaki ka, di ba, dapat meron kang trabaho. You could be a blacksmith, pwede kang warrior, pa pwede kang farmer, basta dapat meron kang tinitake partner role in the community. Next is the social stratification. So, as a certain community becomes civilized, hindi po natin maiiwasan ang categorization of the social classes. Okay? Categorization of the social classes. Naahati po automatically ang isang lugar kapag nagiging civilized ito. Naahati po ang mga tao depending on their wealth, income, race, education, and power. Okay po? Ayan. So, like for example, in, in China. Ayan. So, ito po ay during the Shang Dynasty. So, sa Shang Dynasty po, During the Shang Dynasty, naging civilized po ang China. And as they become civilized, nahati po yung kanilang society in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 social classes. So they are being headed by their king or their emperor. Okay. Emperor po ang tawag sa kanilang hari. So he is the head of political and religious life. So siya rin po ang tagagawa ng batas. Siya rin din po ang judge of crimes. Siya din po ang peacemaker, decision maker ng buong dynasty or ng buong empire. And then, after the king, it is followed by nobles. Ang mga nobles po, they are known as the advisors of the kings. So, ang mga nobles po, sila yung mga tinatawag nating aristocrats. Alam mo, masarap kumain dito. Hindi, joke lang. Aristocrats. Sorry. Okay. 
Ano ba yan? Wait, ayos natin yung sulat ko. What? Hatek no, nabubura. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Ayan. So, they are also known as aristocrats. So, sila po yung may mga pinag-aralan. Sila po yung um, mas pinili po, okay, ang education kaysa sa maging parte ng, ng, uh, ng military. Okay? So, ang mga example ng mga nobles dito, like Confucius, Manchus, Lao Tzu, ayan. So, sila po yung mga advisors. Sila po usually yung mga government officials, mga landlords na tinatawag natin. And then, after the nobles, um, dyan naman po papasok ang mga warrior leaders. So, sila po ang parte ngayon ng ating military or what you call the soldiers. And below them are the artisans. Ang mga artisans, sa madalig salita, sila po ang mga workers. Okay, they are the laborers in pottery, making clothes, okay, using tools and using or making, sorry po, weapons. Okay, artisans or also merchants, hindi lang po nakapaloob dito sa artisans na to, yung mga workers but also merchants o yung mga tinatawag dating mga mga ngalakal. Importante po ang mga workers at merchants. Okay sa China. At sa isa, hindi lang naman sa China but also in Rome, in uh, in Greece, in in every other country. Mahalaga po ang mga ang mga gumagawa po ng pottery, clothes, tools, weapons and merchants kasi malaki po ang nagiging impact nila in the economy of a certain community na nagiging factor for them to become more civilized. And after them are the farmers. Ang mga farmers po hindi po sila tinuturing na workers or the artisans kasi mas mababa po yung kanilang posisyon from those merchants and artisans. So, sila po yung mga nagtatrabaho sa, pagma, sa mga lands, sa pagmamayari po ng mga nobles. Ayan. And after the farmers, okay, farmers or farmers or peasants. So, Pag tinawag kang peasant, ah, hindi pa, hindi ka pa slave. Okay, farmers ka pa lang. Okay, so, par farmers are peasants. And then, ang pinaka nasa dulo po, okay, ng ating social structure are the slaves. Okay, they are in the lowest rank and they are also one of the most important labor resource. Pero hindi po sila importante in the community. Alam nyo ba, during the Shang Dynasty, During the Shang Dynasty, they are not um, numbered as a citizen sa buong empire. So, ibig sabihin, worker lang sila pero hindi po sila kasama okay, as a citizen of the whole empire. Kung baga, parang nagtatrabaho sila pero parang invisible lang sila. Ganun po yun. They were known or they were termed slaves po as possessions. Hindi po sila itinuturing usually na mga na tao. Like the artisans and the farmers, tinuturing po silang mga workers eh, but the slaves are not. They are termed as possessions. Parang kunyari, meron kang pet na pig or na cat. Okay? So, pwede ka rin pong magkaroon ng pet na slave na tao. So, ganun po ang turing okay, sa mga slaves during the Shang Dynasty. At hindi lang po ito evident in the Shang Dynasty or in the China Empire but also in the whole world during the early civilization. So, ang usual po na civil uh, na city sa isang community before, lagi po itong pinagaharian ng isang hari. At ang mga taong sumusunod sa kanya ay yung mga slaves na tinatawag natin. Okay? So, after that, ayan, since, okay, so, recap tayo ng konti. So, ano-ano ang factors of the rise of cities, agricultural innovation, diversification of labor, and the social stratification. And then, we have the central government. So, isa po ito sa pinaka-importanting factor of civilization, the establishment of central government. Government is very important in a certain community because, why? Because they ensure safety. Ang mga government po, okay, ang mga government po, they are the ones who are protecting the people from the enemies. So, mahalaga po na meron, na mahalaga in civilization na you are honoring a certain government because during this time, uso po kasi ang invasion. 
in China, in Mesopotamia, or in other communities or in other countries, uso po ang land invasion. Kaya nga, importante, okay, na ang mga tao in a certain community ay under dapat ng government. Okay, so aside from giving protection to the people, so they also serve as the source of law co codes, o tinatawag nating mga batas, temple records, and the royal chronicles. So ito po yung mga data um, na nagiging source din ng, ng historical information today. And sa government po, nagagaling ang mga tax collectors. So during the time up until now naman, importante naman po talaga ang tax because tax Okay, uh, coming from the money of the people, ang ginagawa po ng government for them to to build uh, to build buildings um, para mapalitada ang kalsada, para mapakain ang mga ang mga tao na walang makain. Okay, so importante in a civilized community that there must be always a central government. Okay, hindi ka po civilized na community kapag wala ka pong gobyerno. Actually, you cannot be termed as a community if there is uh if there is no government ruling over the people. Okay? So, yan. So, as an example, meron tayo dito na um si Hammurabi. Si Hammurabi po ang ika na hari po na ika na ruler ng Babylon. Ayan. So, siya po ang ikaanim na hari ng Babylon. Si Hammurabi was able to conquer Mesopotamia. O, di ba? Ang asig niya, no? Okay? So, makapangyarihan po si Hammurabi during his time. At bakit natin siya pinag-uusapan ngayon? Because the Code of Hammurabi is the first written law code ever published. Okay? Sa buong mundo. So, ito po ang isa sa pinakamatanda at pinakaunang um, written codes na na-publish, na isulat at na-implement sa buong mundo. Okay? Not in the, hindi niya po sakop yung buong mundo but in the land of Babylon and Mesopotamia. So, habi dito, it is served as a model for establishing justice in order, cultures, In, in, in other cultures and are believed to have influenced laws established by Hebrew scribes including those in the book of Exodus. Okay? So, itong Cove of Hammurabi na to, ito po ay composed ng 128 chapters. Mahaba po ito. Ang Code of Hammurabi ay nakasulat po sa stones. Yeah, parang si Moses. Okay. So, kasi nga, nanini, parang according to some researchers, na itong Code of Hammurabi, ang, ang kanyang inspiration dito ay yung um, Book of Exodus na nakasulat sa Bible. So, basically, yung law na nilagay po or yung in-implement po ni Hammurabi ay nakalagay din po sa mga stones or tablets. So, yung Code of Hammurabi, I'll just giving you some examples. For example, meron siyang law dito na eye for an eye. Okay. So, meron siyang law na eye for an eye. Ibig sabihin na ito, kapag, kapag sinaktan ka ng, uh, ng kaibigan mo sa mata, dapat paparosahan din yung kaibigan mo na yon sa mata. Okay? Kunyari, uh, in, in the case today, kapag, uh, kapag tawag ito, kapag ninakawan ka, okay, dapat yun din daw yung kukunin sa'yo. Okay? So, it is like doing the same crime as a punishment. Kung ang nasaktan sa'yo ay kamay, dapat din po saktan at putulin yung kamay ng taong nanakit sa'yo. Okay? So, naintindihan natin. So, parang, ano no, ang, ang hirap, it is term, sabi ng mga researchers din, kasi it is one of the most cruel and most harsh, okay, code ever published. So, kung pwede lang siyang gawin ngayon, kung sino pa lang nanakit sa'yo, kung sinaktan ka ng ex mo, okay, sinaktan yung puso mo, dapat pala, saktan din yung puso niya as a punishment. Pero hindi po siya po pwede because you are in a democratic country. So ano pa? For example, um, may mga surgeon, na during, surgeon during that time, mga ophthalmologist. Kapag ang isang ophthalmologist daw ay nakapagpagamot ng, isa, ng mata, ng isang um, tawag dito ng isang aristocrat or ng isang noble ayan dapat daw po siyang bayaran ng 10 shekels pero kapag ang ginamot niya po ay mga freeman ang babayaran niya lang ang ibabayad daw sa kanya ay 5 shekels at kapag slaves naman yung ginamot niya ang, ba, ang dapat lang ibayad sa kanya ay 2 shekels so kitang-kita mo yung evidence ng social stratification in that kind of law 
Okay? So like for example, ayan, meron silang isang batas dito according to Hammurabi that if a son strike his father kapag daw nanakit. ba diba sabi? Ang gani Kasi sabi sa Book of Exodus, ba diba, in, in the commandments that you shall honor your mother and father. So, parang yun talaga yung inspiration nito ni Hammurabi kasi may may rule siya na kapag ang isang anak daw sinaktan daw niya yung kanyang tatay o yung kanyang magulang ang dapat nakaparusahan daw doon ay dapat putulin yung kamay ng bata na yon okay so yun siya that is the code of Hammurabi so importante kahit na harsh at cruel po yung code of Hammurabi still codes are very important na alam natin yan in norms, di ba? Na kung wala po tayong sinusunod na batas or law codes in a certain country, magiging magulo po ang isang bansa. Okay? Ayan. Okay. So, as what you could see, okay, as what you could see that the most common type of government in in the earliest period is what we call the absolute monarchy. Ayan. So, pag sinabi kasi nating absolute monarchy, uh, monarchy, when we say monarchy, it is a type of government headed by a king or a queen. So, it is an absolute monarchy if all the decisions only come from the king or the queen. Wala, kahit na po siya ay merong advisors, kahit meron siyang mga noble people na pwedeng mag-give ng advice sa kanya, all the decisions will come from even the judgments, even the kind of punishments na ipuput po sa isang krimen ay given only and must be only by the king. So, yun po ang absolute monarchy. Kaya ang nangyayari po dyan is, kapag sinabi kasi nating absolute monarchy, okay, mga gano, ang mga ganun pong klaseng mga type ng government ay merong consistency when it comes to social structure. What do you mean by consistency? Ang mga type po kasi ng monarchy na bansa, kapag pinanganak po naturally as king, okay, ang mga monarchy, okay, ita- ibibigay, ko baga, madidictate niya yung tadhana mo na magiging hari ka in the future. Because you are born as a king. If you are born as a noble, ba diba? mga noble people, ang mga magulang mo, ayan, you will be also become a noble person. Okay? At lalo na kapag slaves ka. If you are born as a slave, mamamatay ka pong alipin kahit na mayroon kang talino ng isang hari. Okay? Ganun po ang absolute monarchy. So, like for example, in established, at tulad na to, yung kay Hammurabi, di ba? As a king of Babylon during that time, uh, kahit na napaka-cruel at napaka-harsh ng kanyang punishment, kahit napakaliit lang na bagay, okay, na ginawa ng isang tao, puputulan na agad ng kamay. Okay, kahit na napakaliit lang na bagay, mabigat na agad yung punishment na binibigay niya. At kahit na anong reklamong gawin ng mga tao during his time, wala po silang palag. Because we have the absolute monarchy. All of these decisions will only come from the one person, the king or the queen. Kaya nga doon po umusbog yung democratization. Okay? Nagkaroon ng democratization because of uh, too much imposing of rules that are so injustice with the welfare of the people. Okay, naintindihan natin yon. So, nag-arise po ang democratization kasi it is already enough. Okay, people are already experiencing too much. Okay, there, there, there is already a withholding of freedom na na-experience ng mga tao. Okay, because every decision nga ay nanggagaling lang sa hari. So, kahit na hindi mo naman intention, kahit nga hindi ikaw yung nagnakaw, Pero sinabi ng hari na ikaw yung nagnakaw, puputulan ka pa rin po ng kamay. Okay? Kaya nga po, doon nag-arise yung democratization. Okay? So, when we say democracy, okay, it came from two Greek words, demos and kratos. When we say demos, it means people, and then kratos meaning rule. So, bigyan lang natin ng difference yung absolute monarchy. In absolute monarchy, it is the government over the people. Sana makasulat ito, ito, ito. It is the government Okay, over the people Okay So kung mapapansin niyo, It is so ironic 
kasi 'di ba sabi natin doon sa ro- role ng ng government that the rule that the role of the government is to protect the people. Pero hindi po ganun yung nagiging kal- kinakalabasan, okay? Since the government is the protector of the people, okay? It came now to a point that the government or the state or the government per se, okay, become the boss of the people. Yan po ang nangyayari sa absolute monarchy. But here in democratization, it is the exact opposite. So it is the people over the government. Okay, so kung naalala nyo yung tagline ni, ni Pinoy, di ba? Sabi ni Pinoy, every time nagiging sinasabi yon na kayo ang boss ko. Okay, that is the exact okay meaning of democracy. People are ruling over the government. It gives people a collective voice in the art of government. Okay, pero it is not necessarily na pupunta ka ng munisipyo tapos kasabi mo sa mayro, lumabas ka dyan. <laughs> Ako ang dapat dyan because I am the part of the people. Hindi po ganun yun. Okay, people are seen as a collective um, group of persons. Okay, na dapat ay binibigyan po ng pagkakataon na mag-express at maging participant. Okay, ng paggawa ng batas. Okay? Kaya nga, di ba, in democracy, so bigyan ko lang kayo ng um, short review. Di ba? Like for example in our um like for example in our type of government today, we have the executive, the legislative, and the judiciary. Sa tingin niyo saan ba nang gagaling yung yung batas o yung bill na ginagawa ng legislative people? Okay? Nang gagaling from the senators, okay? Na emit ito f- Uh, uh, from the senators uh, na, meet, na emit po ito o na ipasa po ito galing sa Congress. At yung mga tao po sa Kongreso, meron silang mga lower branches like the barangay captains, the mayor, and the governor. So, nanggagaling po yung boses, okay? Nanggagaling po yung bata sa boses ng mga tao. Okay, continue na natin in in our form of government, 'di ba? In the legislative kung paano po ginagawa ang batas, nagkakaroon po, nagka-come up po ng bill. Okay, ang mga congressman or congresswomen because it is what the people wants. Okay? Not 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 it is not what they want, it is not what the president wants, but bills are being made because it is what the people need. Okay? Kaya nga 'di ba kung mapapansin niyo, you could create a bill. Any bill, pwede ka pong gumawa ng kahit na anong bill na gusto mo kung congressman ka. Kaya nga, di ba, ang sabi, before, ang, uh, like for example, there is this issue about LGBTQ. Anong nangyari? Dahil lang sa maraming mga umuusbong na mga homosexuals, bisexuals, and members of the, uh, of the LGBTQ, di ba, na-inspire ngayon, di ba, yung isang congressman, di ba, na gumawa ng isang bill that will protect the people or that will protect the people under the LGBTQ. So, nagkakaroon ng inspiration ang mga congressman because of the needs of the people. That is what we call democracy. May boses po ang tao as a part and as a participant of the government. Kahit nga eh, kahit nga in, um, tawag dito, in, in, just before the martial law is implemented in our country, nagkaroon tayong tinatawag na plebiscite. Bago magkaroon ng dictatorship in the Philippines, nagkaroon po ng botohan. Okay, plebiscite. It is, ang boto po dito, hindi po to botohan tulad na sa balota, but plebiscite, voting between yes or no. So, bago magkaroon ng martial law, bago po nagkaroon ng martial law before, nagkaroon po ng plebiscite. Okay, na tinatawag natin. Pero ang nangyari, during the time of Marcos, dinaya din po yung plebiscite. Okay, ang naging members kasi ng plebiscite na yun is mga kabataan, mga bata na wala namang masyadong alam. Okay, mga elite, mga kaibigan ni Marcos na wala namang masyadong alam on the possible effects of dictatorship. So, ganun po yung nangyari. Okay, still, but that is what we call democracy. Okay. Kaya kayo, 'di ba? Huwag kayong matatakot that there is really a threat that Duterte will declare dictatorship or martial law because the decision will still come from the people. Kasi democratic na country tayo. Kung gusto ng bansa or kung gusto ng presidente natin na mag-dictate tayo ng ng dictatorship or magbago tayo ng ng, ng government into federalism. Since tayo ay nanggaling sa isang democratic na bansa, he will still 
ha- need to have your yes or no. He will still have kubaga the need or he will still kubaga his he will still need okay to have your answer. Ganon po ang democracy. Okay? So malinaw. So I hope na intindihan natin 'yon. So si Cleisthenes po ang ating father of democracy. So siya po um may kasama siya si I forgot the friend pero meron siyang isang kaibigan then na uh, nakasama niya na i-propose po ang democracy in the Greece during their time. So siya po ang ama ng demokrasya. Okay. So ngayon, aside from democracy, since pinag-uusapan na lang din natin ang government, meron po tayong iba't ibang types ng government. First, we have the authoritarianism. So author- authoritarianism, it is the enforcement okay, of obedience to a central authority at the expense of personal freedom. Ayan. So there is an enforcement of obedience that will restrict your own personal freedom. That is authoritarianism. So ang magandang example ng author- authoritarianism ay yung absolute monarchy wherein people have no does not have the voice, okay, to say no sa sinasabi ng ruler. Okay, dictatorship, ganyan po ang authoritarianism. So, ayan. So, the authoritative person o yung natawag ating presidente, yung hari o yung sultan sa ibang mga culture o ibang mga bansa, they they decide, okay, basing on the uh, the rival values and or the pragmatic decision making. Okay, so ngayon, in the author- authoritarianism, so nagbabasi po si, yung decision na, di ba sabi ko kanina sa inyo, in democratic, every de- decision that this country made, lalo-lalo na kapag ang, ang, ang babaguhin ay about the constitution, ang babaguhin ay about sa batas, kailangan po ng boses ng bayan. So, in the authoritarianism, hindi po. The opinion only comes from the person who is ruling the whole community or the whole country. So, nagba, naggumagawa po siya ng mga batas, ng mga decision based on the rival values. Ano pag sinabing rival values, these are, kumbaga, the concept of religion, basis sa kanyang paniniwala in religious terms. Okay? And of course, pragmatic decision making. So, itong mga pragmatic decision making na to, these are the principles that are also being followed by the military. Okay? Kaya nga, magandang example dito, yung dictatorship. Okay? Dahil sa kung ano yung concept na meron ang military, okay, binibigyan yun ng power, binibigyan ng buhay, at ina-apply sa isang buong community. So, the land, during the earliest time, the land belongs to a few big landowners, while the poor farmers who cultivated it are called hectemoroi. Okay? So, Ang nangyayari ngayon dyan, during the earliest period of time, kahit na pagod ka na, kahit na hindi mo na kayang magtrabaho, matanda ka na, or babae ka, you are still forced to work because that is what your boss are making you do. Okay? Malinaw po. Kaya nga doon nag, nag-result ng slavery na tinatawag natin because of authoritarianism. Next, okay. Example na to ay ang China. Ang China po ay communist type po sila ng government. Kaya kung mamamasin natin, lalo na ngayon, sa COVID-19, di ba? Uh, the government of China proclaimed quarantine in the whole country, in every provinces in the whole China. So, nung ginawa ng mga tao, they strictly followed. Okay? Kasi nga, authoritarianism, communist po silang bansa. Okay? They already know automatically that they cannot protest. Alex sa Pilipinas, iba? Kina-quarantine na nga ang buong ang ibang provinces ng bansang to. Pero may mga nagpo-protesta pa din. May mga lumalabas pa din. May mga gumagala pa din. Okay? Naiintindihan natin? So, of course, also in Brunei. Ang Brunei po, they're also using um, authoritarianism. So, meron po silang tinatawag na sultan. So, basically, ang mga low, law codes na sinusunod po ng sultan ay base sa mga rival values or the ethical or, sorry, religious concepts. Okay? So, maganda po ang authoritarianism kung iisipin natin. Okay? Because authoritarianism will make will make people follow immediately and urgently without asking questions. Okay, napaka-effective po ng author- authoritarianism, lalo-lalo na if there is um if there is a threat 
or if there is a harm or danger happening in a community. Hindi po mahihirapan na pasunurin ang mga tao because ito yung nakagawian eh. Ito yung klase ng government. Kasi if you will disobey, if you will resist on what the authority are telling to you, you will be killed. You will be arrested. Okay? So, ang hirap ngayon dito sa Pilipinas, we are a very democratic country. Okay? Kahit na ilang paunawa, ilang pakiusap na, di ba, ang ginagawa ng mga policemen, ni President Duterte, people are still going outside. Okay? Naka, maiintindihan pa natin those people na talagang walang magawa kundi magtrabaho kasi walang makain. But it is really unreasonable for those people who will conduct protests. Okay, bashing the president, lumalabas ang bahay despite of what the president is telling us to do. Okay, so yeah, that is authoritarianism. Next is oligarchy. Oligarchy is a form of power structure in which power rests with a small number of people. Okay, or what we call the noblemen. Ayan. So, alos lahat po ng mga bansa, there are certain countries na pag sinabi kasi po natin small number of people, it usually comprise of uh, wealthy people. Sila po yung mga mayayamang mga tao, mayayamang mga dynasties ng mga tao, ng mga pamilya, mga malalaking mayayamang businessman na merong malaking say sa gobyerno. Okay? So, yun po yung oligarchy. So, ang ang boses na pinanggagalingan po ng decision making ay hindi lang po nang gagaling sa sa uh, sa sa president or sa prime authority but also with these people sa mga noblemen po hindi po sa mga tao but with the noblemen Okay, so maayos din, maganda ko isipin natin ng oligarchy. Kasi if we will be thinking, if the vo- if the decision making will come from this nobleman, we could rest assured na the decisions will be effective. Because these noblemen are hindi po basta-basta. They are, they, they, kaya po sila naging mayaman, kaya po sila naging magaling na businessman because they have good leadership. Okay? So, itong mga noblemen na to, hindi po ito yung mga, mga artista lang. Okay? Hindi lang po ito yung mga ma-influensya mga tao, but this noblemen comprise of good leaders. Okay? That could effectively make decisions for the country. Kung isipin mo nga ngayon, no, parang mas katiwa-tiwala pa ang paniwalaan o sundin ang mga oligarchs kaysa sa mga membro ng kongreso na artista. Okay? So, yan. Yeah. Aside from oligarchy, we have tyranny. Tyranny, this is, our, this is the last type of government. Tyranny, the formal written constitution is not adhered to and is broken by force of arms. Okay? Ang pinagkaiba po ng tyranny sa, uh, ito, sa authoritarianism is ang authoritarianism, meron silang sinusunod na rule. Tama? O matatandaan ninyo? May sinusunod, sin- may sinusunod silang rule. Tama? Rival values and the uh, rules in, in the military. Pero dito, in the tyranny or tyranny, okay? Formal written codes, the, ri- the, pri- the rival values or the code of ethics of the military can be broken, cannot be adhered. Okay, because of a single person who undertakes to rule as a monarch and primarily in his personal interest. Okay, so ang tyranny po, uh, kahit po na meron ng existing na batas na sinasabi na bawal, dahil siya po ay monarch, dahil siya po ay prime na authority sa isang community, meron siyang kapangyarihan na baliin ito. At baguhin ito depende sa kanyang paniniwala, depende sa kanyang opinion and personal interest. Okay? So, during the earliest time, the city-states were ruled by Greek leaders called tyrants. Ayan. So, dito na din still pumapasok yung tawag na absolute monarchy. Okay? Kasi kung isipin natin, kahit na may written code na kailangang dumaan sa, sa, uh, sa what they call this, due process of law. Pero kung tyranny po ang klase ng government na meron isang community, malaki po ang possibility na hindi po iyon masunod. Kasi ang masusunod lang po is yung boses po ng prime ruler. Okay? In a community. Okay? So, that's it. Hanggang doon na lang po yung ating lesson. But, 
before we end this video, I have this one question for all of you. So, itong tanong na to will serve as your extra credit in recitation. So, kahit po kayo ay nasa bahay lang, ayan, you can still be able to earn a grade through answering this question. So, itong tanong po na sasabihin ko na ito ay hindi po po pwedeng sabihin, hindi po po pwedeng uh, i-chat, i-post sa mga kaklase po ninyo. Basically, you were only able to answer this question if you have watched this video, if you have listened to this lesson. So, ang mga tao lang po na magkakaroon ng access okay, to answer the question are only those people who will watch the video. So, the reason kung bakit hindi ko po siya nilagay sa slide kasi para mapakinggan nyo talaga siya. Okay? So, I really, I just really want you to to understand the full lesson. Because important po talaga na matutunan mo na natin to. Because ito po ay prerequisite na ating mga susunod na lessons in the next few weeks. Okay, so the question now is. So after we discuss all the types of government, from democracy to authoritarianism, oligarchy, and tyranny, what type of government? Okay, do you think will ensure the protection of the common good? Okay, so what type of government will ensure the protection of the common good? Pag sinabi po natin common good, magkaiba po ito sa majority wins. Ang common good po, this is the um, benefit of everybody. Mahirap man, mayaman, minority or majority, lahat po ay makaka-experience ng protection na ito. And what do you think is the type of government that will assure that? Is it democratic? Is it authoritarianism? Is it oligarchy or tyranny? So you are going to write your answer. Okay? You are going to type your answer on the comment box below. Okay? So, ang gagawin nyo lang po is you just need to to identify anong klase ng government and you need to answer why. Bakit po sa tingin mo Uh, okay siyang makapag-protect po ng um, freedom or sorry, ng pro um, makapag-protect po ng safety ng mga tao. Okay? So, uulitin ko, bawal po itong i-post, bawal po itong um, i-sabihin, bawal po itong i-text, i-message sa mga kaklase. So, kapag tinanong po ano yung kinomment mo, bakit ka nag-comment ng ganyan, you, need, you do not need to answer them. Okay, so you need to make them watch this and listen to this lesson. So if you have any questions, you could comment in the comment box below. So thank you so much for listening. So keep safe everyone. Ingat po tayo lahat. Huwag lalabas ng bahay kung hindi po kayang mag-access ng video na to. Huwag na po nating pilitin. Okay, so kung sino lang po ang kayang mag-access po ng video, it is okay. Pero kung hindi po kayang mag-access, wala pong problema. So please keep safe everyone and have a nice day. God bless everyone.